is not coming anyhow. Huh? So there is some. Uh, I think there is some technical problem. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. You, you are audible, sir. Audible. Okay, okay. But I'm okay. Audible, sir. What about any presentation? Is there, sir? Right, sir. I'm going to share it. Uh, my video is not working, sir. Actually, I cannot. I don't know. The camera is not properly. Okay, working. no problem, sir. Uh, uh, okay. Share to share, sir. Okay, okay. I'm going to share the uh, PPT, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, is it visible, sir? Not yet, yes, sir. You are getting it. Started. Started. Ah, uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, sir. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, respected uh, uh, Engineer Brahma Reddy Garu, Chairman, uh, uh, Telangana State Center, uh, and Brahma Reddy Garu, uh, uh, and also our uh, uh, Secretary, sir, and the Chairman of ECM, and all the respected uh, members. Good evening, good evening, one and all. Okay. So, this is energy conservation, pulse width modulation for uh, inverters. Uh, actually, this why how this pulse width modulation is connected with the energy conservation, first of all. So, inverter, as we know that, we are aware of that, the inverter is nothing but uh, which converts the DC to AC. So, DC voltage, which we are going to convert it to alternating voltage. And that alternating voltage, we are going to uh, utilize for uh, AC uh, loads. That AC loads may be, uh, we, that may be an induction motor or otherwise uh, anything, any AC motor we are going to use for that. Okay. So, here in the conversion system, while for, from uh, DC to AC, as we are using the inverters, actually we will get a quasi square waveform output. Actually, what is meant by a quasi square waveform output? For example, if you if you take uh, just one second. So you see here, if you take, uh, uh, for example, I want to write something. Uh, You see here this inverter output voltage. If you see the uh, output voltage of the inverter, that is nothing but a quasi square waveform output we are going to get. So, as we are giving the DC to the inverter, here this is a DC. So, we are going to get a positive uh, DC and negative positive side, negative side like this. We are going to get in an inverter. During this conversion uh, from DC to AC, there are some losses will be there. So, those are nothing but switching losses like that. So, to get a reliable AC supply from the given DC from the by using the inverter, we are going to use this pulse width modulation techniques. That's why the overall losses of the system we are going to decrease. And at the same time, the improved output voltage we are going to get, which is nothing but uh, the effect which is similar to the uh, AC we are going to get by using this uh, pulse width modulation technique. For example, if you see, uh, this is the so what are the contents of this one? Uh, so, if you see that. Uh, this is having pulse width modulation techniques we are going to discuss uh, in the today lecture. So, what is the basic pulse width modulation techniques? And also, uh, so what is the basic two level inverter? And uh, in addition to that, uh, what is the multi level inverter? And uh, what is the space vector pulse width modulation here? So, as I told you that, uh, so we have the inverter output voltage. We are going to get a quasi square waveform output like this. If we see the total harmonic distortion of this inverter output voltage, which we are saying AC. An alternating voltage, which we are saying. So, this THD, if you see, we are going to get around 70% of total harmonic distortion we are having in this. So, if the inverter switches, so for example, we have the switches in the inverter. So, where uh, you see here, uh, the switches where are, uh, for example, it is a two level inverter, we are going to use uh, six number of switches. When we are going to use the six number of uh, uh, switches here, so, what happens is this inverter output voltage we are going to get in this form. So, instead of continuously turning on a switch or turning off a switch, so if we turn it on and turn off many times in the, during the positive half cycle, so we are going to turn on the switches and turn off the switches, turn on, turn off, turn on, turn off like that. We are going to get the output voltage in the positive side in the form of the pulses. At the same time, we are going to get the output voltage in the form of the pulses in the negative side. So, this voltage, this uh, what is that uh, spectrum analysis? If you see the spectrum analysis of uh, 
this output voltage, which is from the inverter. So the THD, if you see the THD, this will be drastically decreases. So that, that's why instead of continuously turning on and turning, turning on the switches during the positive half cycle and second negative half cycle, if you do many times like this, so whatever the output voltage we are going to get, that output voltage total high distribution we are going to get around 50% like this. Okay, so if you use the further uh, pulse width modulation techniques, we may get that maybe 25% or 15% or sometimes less than 5% which is given by the IEEE, which is uh, noted by the IEEE, less than 5% also we are going to get here. So for that purpose, we are going to use uh, the pulse width modulation. What is meant by pulse width modulation? How to turn on, when to turn off your switch and when to turn on your switch, that will be decided by means of pulse width modulation techniques. So the pulse width modulations are nothing but so, so for that, what is what is a uh, what is a reference point we have to check right now? So, how do how much time period we have to turn on this and uh, how much time period we have to turn off that switch? For that, that we are going to decide by using this uh, pulse width modulation techniques. So, what is pulse width modulation technique here? If you see, okay. Okay, why pulse width modulation is? Here, the, the main purpose of this pulse width modulation is control of fundamental component of the output voltage waveform. The output voltage waveform fundamental component we are going to control. And to achieve a good spectral performance, that is nothing but low total harm distortion. And to achieve a good DC bus utilization, for that purpose, we are going to use pulse width modulation. So what is pulse width modulation here? If you see that, if you see the pulse width modulation here, so if you see that, <coughs> We are going to get uh, when to turn on our switch and when to turn off our switch. Something is happening. Okay, what are the various pulse width modulation techniques here? So here, basic pulse width modulation technique. So in this basic pulse width modulation technique, we have, uh, what is that, uh, uh, single pulse width modulation, multiple pulse width modulation, and science shadow pulse width modulation. And after that, advanced PWM technique, those are nothing but trapezoidal modulation, staircase modulation, stepped modulation, delta modulation, and finally, space vector pulse width modulation technique. In this space vector pulse width modulation technique, so we are going to achieve the THD is very, very less. So what is basic pulse width modulation technique here? One is single pulse width modulation technique, I, I told you. So during the entire positive half cycle, we are giving one pulse. And during the negative half cycle, we are giving the another pulse to the, the thyristors or switches presented in the inverter. So because of that, we are going to get the output voltage like this. This is, this is the inverter output voltage. We are going to get like this. OK? So here, if you see that, uh, this is inverter output voltage. So what is single pulse width modulation we are going to see now. So here, what is the single pulse width modulation? So here there is a carrier signal. This is a carrier signal. And we are having a reference signal. So this is also a carrier signal and this is the reference signal. So this we are going to use during the positive half cycle and this we are going to use during the negative half cycle. How the carrier signal is? You see here, carrier signal is starting from AC and mid of the time period, it is coming to zero and after that, it is increasing. Similarly, maximum and coming to zero and increasing in the negative way. That we are going to compare with the reference signal here. So what is the reference signal here? AR is the reference signal. So wherever the reference signal magnitude is greater than the carrier signal, during that interval, we are providing a pulse to this thyristor G1. Thyristor or switch G1. Here, you see here, here what is that during this interval alpha 1 to alpha 2, this is alpha 1 and this is alpha 2, in between alpha 1 and alpha 2, the reference signal magnitude is greater than the carrier signal, so that we are going to get uh, uh, this alpha 1 to alpha 2, you are, you are providing a switch to the thyristor so that uh, it is conducting. So during the negative half cycle, when the switch is conducting, the DC is connected with our uh, AC, this DC is connected with our uh, output, so that output follows the input voltage, so that th this is the source voltage Vs, so that we got this is the uh, positive half cycle and this is the negative half cycle. And during complete one cycle, we are going to get only one pulse. So that is because of uh, 
This is known as single pulse width modulation technique. So if you find out the total harm distortion of this one, again, this is also very higher. <clears throat> so for that, we are going for the next procedure. What is the next procedure, next method here? The next method is nothing but multiple pulse width modulation. What is meant by multiple pulse width modulation? So this is multiple pulse width modulation. So we are going to take the carrier signal here. This is the carrier signal, which is having multiple frequencies. Here, frequency is higher. So this, this is the carrier signal and this is the reference signal. And again, we are comparing these two signals. Whenever this reference signal magnitude is greater than this carrier signal, we are providing a pulse during that interval. That is nothing but alpha 1 to alpha 2. And second one is alpha 3 to alpha 4. And alpha 5 to alpha 6 during this interval. So that these are the pulses we are providing to the switches. So that we are going to turn on the switches from alpha 1 to alpha 2 and turn off the switches from alpha 2 to alpha 3. Like that we are giving the multiple number of the pulses during the first half cycle, the multiple number of pulses during the negative half cycle. If you observe here, the width of the pulse is equal here. The each uh, pulse width is the same. So that's why what is the output as during when the switch is on, the output follows the input so that this is the Vs and after that 0, Vs, 0, Vs. So that output is also in the form of pulses we are going to get here. Okay, so that is called multiple pulse width modulation. Multiple pulse width modulation here. So next one is sinusoidal pulse width modulation. Here this carrier signal is nothing but sinusoidal. This is the carrier, sorry, reference signal is nothing but the sinusoidal and carrier signal is a triangular waveform. This is a triangular waveform. So that during this interval, this uh, reference signal magnitude is greater than the carrier signal so that this is the width of the pulse. You see here, the width of the pulse is very higher here. And after that, during this interval, this is the width of the pulse. During this interval, this is the width of the pulse. During this interval, this is the width of the pulse. Like that, if you see the output voltage, so that gate pulse G1 and G4 we are giving, so that if you see the output voltage, the output voltage also we are going to get in the form of the pulses, but the width of the each pulse is different. So now if we change the carrier signal, say carrier signal frequency, for example, I am doubling this. I am doubling this means how the carrier signal will be more number of double the number of pulses we are going to get during the past two half cycle and pi to two pi also we are going to get. So that more number of pulses we are going to get. So this is known as a sinusoidal pulse width modulation technique. When we are observing the total harmonic distortion of this output voltage, so it is improved output voltage we are going to get that is something but the lower order harmonics will be reduces or the total harmonic distortion will be decreases in the output voltage waveform. So this is called the sinusoidal pulse width modulation technique. So next one is trapezoidal modulation technique. You see here, here like a trapezoidal, we are comparing with a trapezoidal here. So this is one trapezoidal during positive and this is the next trapezoidal during negative. And same thing, this uh, uh, we are going to compare with the triangular pulses so that we are going to develop the pulses and this correspondingly your inverter will leave the output voltage in the form of the pulses. Again, THD will be reduces. So next one is staircase modulation. <clears throat> what is meant by staircase modulation here? You see here, we are going to take like a staircase and this is the carrier signal and reference signal we are going to take like a staircase. And same thing, whenever this carrier signal magnitude is greater than this, we are going to get the pulses so that this is the output voltage. So that this is the positive side and this is the negative side. So that the THD is some X value of the THD we are going to get. So these all are nothing but the basic uh, pulse width modulation techniques. Uh, that the main uh, aim of this basic pulse width modulation technique is nothing but when to turn on our switch and when to turn off our switch in the thyristor. When to turn it on and when to turn it off with the switches in the thyristor. So that we are going to get the output voltage in the form of the pulses like this. So by using the different techniques, this output voltage V0, which is nothing but alternating in nature, positive and negative. So when we are finding the total harmonic distortion of this one, this is a less value compared to that a continuous pulse. Continuous pulse. This is known as a pulse width modulation technique. That this is a basic method actually. This basic method I want to uh, uh, I want to uh, give a lecture on this basic method. Uh, if time permits, or otherwise in coming days I am going to. Uh, uh, concentrate on uh, the latest or advanced pulse width modulation techniques. Okay, 
So this is a, a staircase modulation technique. And next one is, uh, so this is known as uh, stepped modulation. So what is meant by stepped modulation? This reference signal we are going to take in the form of the steps and carrier signal is nothing but the triangle. Again, same thing here we are going to compare. So because of that, this is the output voltage we are getting here. So this is known as stepped modulation. This uh, reference signal we are giving in the, in the form of the steps. So that's why it is known as stepped modulation. Next one is uh, delta modulation is there. That is known as uh, hysteresis band we are going to take here. Here there is a lower band limit I am going to take. And this is the high, uh, higher band limit or upper band limit. So in between that, we are going to fit the carrier signal and reference signal we are going to take as a sign signal, signal like this. So because of this, this is the output voltage which we can get by using the delta modulation technique. So next one is the latest one is nothing but the space vector pulse modulation technique. So what is meant by space vector? A vector which is rotating in the space is known as space vector pulse modulation technique. So it is having several advantages. The basic advantage is it will give better spectral performance compared with the sinusoidal pulse modulation technique. And there is an enhanced DC bus utilization. That's why 1.15 times. That's why it is 15% more compared with the sinusoidal pulse modulation technique. And this space vector pulse modulation generates the less harmonic distortion in the output voltage of the current in comparison with the sinusoidal pulse modulation. So here the basic uh, objective of this one is nothing but we are going to develop the less total harmonic distortion as well as uh, it is giving 15% more DC bus utilization. And apart from this, it is giving better spectral performance. So what is the advantage actually? Why you want to go for the uh, space vector pulse width modulation is, uh, as is uh, said that spectral performance is uh, very high. Our improved spectral performance we are going to get. So because of that, if you see the total harmonic distortion, the lower order harmonics are minimum third, fifth, seventh harmonics will be suppressed or minimized. And these harmonics will be shifts towards the higher order. In the uh, THD spectrum, if you see the THD spectrum, these harmonics will be shifts towards the higher order, 50 times or 100 times or 150 times like that. Whenever we are uh, total, the, uh, what is that? Uh, the lower order harmonics are absent and higher order harmonics are present, this uh, small higher order harmonics we can eliminate by using uh, small filters. By using small filters, we can eliminate this higher order harmonics. That is the advantage. If you go for science order pulse width modulation technique, lower order harmonics are present, third, fifth, seventh, like that ninth, like that harmonics, are, odd, odd number of harmonics, lower order harmonics will be present in SPWM technique. It cannot be eliminated, lower order harder harmonics, by using space vector pulse width modulation, this lower or hard order harmonics will be shifts towards the higher order. And this higher order we can eliminate or we can simply take out by using the filters. Okay, that is a basic advantage here. So because of that, uh, the most of the research is going on on uh, pulse width modulation techniques. So that what is the principle of space vector pulse width modulation? So it will treat the sinusoidal voltage as a constant amplitude vector. What is space vector? A vector which is rotating in space. A vector which is rotating in space means, for example, this is a vector. So this is rotating in space. So like that, this vector is rotating in the space. So that once it is what, 60 degrees, 120 degrees, 180 degrees, like that, uh, 240 degrees, 300 degrees, like that. If it is uh, a vector which is, which is having some magnitude, a vector which is having some magnitude, if it is rotating in space, that is known as a space vector. It is known as a space vector. So that what we are assuming here, what we are treating here, whatever the sinusoidal voltage, this is the sinusoidal voltage. We are treating the sinusoidal voltage as a vector which is rotating in the space. For example, if we take the, uh, what is that, the three-phase AC supply. If we take the three-phase AC supply, so what is the advantage of uh, the three-phase AC supply on the application point of view? Whenever a three-phase AC supply is given to the stator of the induction motor, so it will give a rotating magnetic field. So what is the nature of the rotating magnetic field? The nature of the rotating magnetic field is also like this. It will jump for every 60 degrees. 0, 60, 120, 180, 240, 
300 like this it will jump so that that is nothing but a rotating magnetic field a sinusoidal three phase ac supply a pure three phase ac supply is providing a rotating magnetic field so that this sinusoidal voltage we are treating this uh, sinusoidal voltage as a vector which is having a constant amplitude but which is rotating at the constant frequency it is rotating for 50 times so one second 50 times it will rotate because we are going to get 50 cycles in one second if the frequency is 50 hertz so that this is the vector which is making 50 cycles in one second so how it is zero it is not smooth rotating vector it is it 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 jumps for every 60 degrees like this so that 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 phenomenon and the, uh, that point we are going to assume for uh, space vector pulse modulation technique so this pwm technique approximates the voltage references to seven approximations eight approximations which is nothing but eight switching state those are known as switching states or switching vectors which is v1 to v6 this will divide the plane into six uh, sectors so how it is dividing the plane we are going to see now okay for example if you see this is the uh, uh, what is that the two level inverter this is the two level inverter we are giving the three phase ac supply and we are using the diode rectifier here so that by using the diode rectifier we are going to achieve a dc supply here which is nothing but vdc here there is a capacitor we are going to connect and here in the two level inverter there are one two three four five six six switches are present and that inverter output voltage which is nothing but ac that we are going to give to an induction motor here this is the induction motor <clears throat> okay so this is nothing but an induction motor this is an induction motor this is a two level inverter and there is a diode rectifier and we are giving the three phase AC supply so these are called poles v a b a b c are called poles and o is the uh, what is that zero potential so that uh, the pole voltage voltage at a with respect to zero is known as v a o and this is v b o and this is VCO. This voltage is known as VCO. So then, for example, if this switch is on, if this switch is on, this plus VDC is connected to A. So what is the potential of A with respect to O? That is nothing but this VDC. So that there is a VDC. If the upper switch is turned on, we are going to get the pole voltage as VDC. For example, if the lower switch is turned on, this switch is turned on, we are giving the pulse to this switch. So this A is connected to O. That is nothing but zero, so that we are going to get a zero voltage. So that there are six switches S1, S2, S3, S4, S5, S6. Out of this, if the upper switches are turned on, the corresponding pole voltage are VDC. If the lower switches are turned on, the corresponding pole voltage is zero. So in that way, we are going to take here. So for example, if the upper switch is on, so what is VC naught? VC naught is nothing but VDC. For example, this switch is on at that point of time. What is VB naught? VB naught is zero. At that same moment, this switch is on. So that what is VA naught? VA naught is nothing but VDC. So during this interval, during this case, VA naught we are going to get as VDC, and VB naught we are going to get as zero, and VC naught we are getting, going to get as VDC. So either VDC or zero. So but at a time we have to turn on any three switches. That may be from the three legs. That may be from the three legs. Our top three switches are bottom three switches, top, bottom, bottom, top, top, bottom, 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 top, like that we have to turn on the different switches in this case. Okay. If we turn on the different switches in the different sequence, we are going to get different pole voltages. V A naught, V V naught, V C naught, we are going to get in the different way. So that <coughs> when they are going in a different way, when they are going in a different way, so how the what is space vector here? For example, V A naught plus V B naught plus V C naught, because we are saying our sinusoidal voltage, what are the sinusoidal voltage we are getting from the inverter, we are treating this one as a vector rotating in space for every 60 degrees. Like this, it is jumping in the space for every 60 degrees. Okay, it is rotating in the space. So that uh, this collectiveness of three phases, V A B C, V A, V A, V A B, V B C, V C A is giving this so that in the three switches in the three decks if you see that uh, three decks here in the previous case so as va naught vb naught vc naught are getting so that the resultant of these three voltages or three pole voltages is nothing but this is the case so this is known as uh, the space space vector 
representation or uh, reference voltage. This is known as the reference voltage. So what is the V reference here? V reference is nothing but VA naught, first uh, pole voltage, plus second pole voltage, which is displaced by 120 degrees, so that E power J 2 pi by 3, plus VC naught, E power J 4 pi by 3. So like that we are going to consider here. So when we are considering in that way, so what is that? This uh, the net voltage you see here. For example, uh, uh, this each leg is having either top or bottom. So either this switch must be turned on, or this switch is, must be turned on. When upper switch is turned on, we are indicating with a symbol of plus. When lower switch is turned on, we are indicating with a symbol of minus. So like that. For example, so all three the upper switches are turned on. We are going to represent with a plus 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 this is the switching state for example here what is the switching states we are going to take if the uh, top bottom bottom upper lower lower so that we are going to get here vna naught is vdc and lower vb naught is zero vc naught is zero so that uh, this is switching state we are saying as plus minus minus next one here upper upper bottom so that plus plus minus so that first digit first place is for first leg second place is for second leg the third place is for third one is for third leg so that in this case how these switches are top top bottom upper upper and bottom so that upper plus upper plus bottom minus like this we are going to represent here like that here also what is that uh, uh, bottom top bottom what is that minus plus minus similarly minus plus plus like that we are going to uh, achieve two to the power of three switching states we will get because this is a two level inverter three legs are there so in each leg either top or bottom should be turned on so that there are two combinations are there so that's why two to the power of three three that is nothing but eight switching states are possible so that these are the four switching states and next two switching states are uh, they are the remaining switching states so for example all here if you see uh top 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 all top all top means plus 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 all bottom minus 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 here top bottom top plus minus plus so this is a way of representation of the switching states in the two level inverter in case of the svpwm technique so because of this what happens you see here here so for example we are operating a switching state of plus plus minus we are operating plus plus minus if it is plus plus minus what is va naught va naught is nothing but vdc vb naught is vdc and vc naught is zero in that our space vector equation if you substitute this VA naught, VBC, VC, uh, VC naught, we are going to get it is nothing but VDC at an angle of 60 degrees. So that that means if this is a two level inverter, this is a two level inverter. So we are giving a DC supply here. And this is the output voltage we are going to use for some D, uh, AC application that may be induction motor. So when we are maintaining this switch is closed and this switch is closed and this switch is closed. So that is plus plus minus. At that moment, the resultant voltage of these three phases is giving a voltage VDC at an angle of 60 degrees. So what that means here, this is the zero axis. And when we are maintaining plus plus minus, uh, plus, uh, we are maintaining plus plus minus, we are going to get a space vector, which is at 60 degrees, whose magnitude is nothing but VDC. So in this polar form like this, for example, I am maintaining all my all bottom all bottom is we are going to get a zero vector. Here there we are going to get a zero vector. Or otherwise I am taking plus minus minus. So that uh, in the first like this is closed, this is closed, this is closed, this is closed. So that VB naught, VC naught will become zero. So that what is the reference voltage? VA naught is the only voltage. So if you maintain a switching state of plus minus minus, we are going to get VDC, that is nothing but VDC at an angle of zero degrees. So that if you maintain a switching state of plus minus minus, we are going to get VDC at an angle of zero. If you maintaining a switching state of plus plus minus, we are going to get VDC at an angle of 60 degrees. In that way, in this way, if you maintain the different switching states or uh, if you have the different switching states, so that in that case, we are going to get a space vector like this. This is a two level inverter uh, switching vector. So where if you are operating plus minus minus if you are operating plus minus minus we are going to get a zero vector uh, sorry we is at an angle of zero if you maintaining plus plus minus we are going to get a vector with 60 degrees 
if you maintain plus minus plus uh, sorry minus plus minus we are going to get with 120 minus plus plus 180 minus minus plus this one and plus minus plus this is minus 60 or plus 300 degrees you see here in the inverter if you operate the different switchings we are going to get a vector which is jumping for every 60 degree this is known as uh, the space vector of the space, uh, space vector pulse width modulation this is only space vector so that this is known as sector one this is known as sector three and there are the other phase also there what is that all place all top and all bottom when all top is given we are going to get the zero voltage all negatives are given we are going to get the zero voltage so that there are the two switching states all plus and all minus will contributing for a zero voltage this is called two two level inverter uh, switching vector uh, sir i request uh, srinivas engineer srinivas acharya sir uh, sir how much time is there sir <laughs> no problem <laughs> sir how much time you require now it is 10 to 5 okay maybe you 10 to 50 minutes sir, finish sir right right sir right sir right sir because this is very much useful, sir, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. please continue. Sir. No problem. Yes, thank you. <laughs> My participants' okay. response also very good. Please continue. Okay. Right, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Okay. You see here, uh, dwelling time calculations. So, what I, I told you, uh, <coughs> very good. I told you, we are getting a space vector by operating these switches. 0, 60, 120, like this, a, jump, a vector which is jumping in uh, 60 degrees. But this is not the space vector pulse with modulation. This is only space vector, a vector which is rotating in this space. What is mean by space vector pulse correlation is we had to get a vector. We had to get a vector. How we had to get a vector? We know that this is sector one. I told you this is sector one. What is sector one? A one is VDC at an angle of zero. This is one. And this is VDC at an angle of 60 degrees. When we are getting this one, if we operate top, bottom, bottom, we are getting this VDC at an angle of zero. And we are maintaining plus, plus, minus, we are getting at an angle of 60 degrees. But our intention is, in one complete cycle of the sinusoidal voltage, your vector should not jump for 6. If it is jumping for 6, that is normal three-phase AC supply characteristics. But in between this, in between this, your vector has to be jump for 1 is 0, for example, out of 60, I want to have 4. 4 means 15. One is at 15 degrees. Other one is at 30 degrees. One more is at 45 degrees. And one more should be at 60 degrees. So that because of this, uh, in one sector, you see here, in uh, one sector, if you see, <coughs> if you look at the one sector here, so achieving, uh, we, it is not our, our duty. It is not enough to get... Uh, this, uh, uh, this is one point, this is other point, this is one more point like this. I want to get a vector at 15 degrees, 30 degrees, 45 degrees, and 60 degrees. That is one thing. And second one, I want to control this voltage also. I don't want uh, VDC times. I don't want VDC. I want only 50% of VDC only. What is meant by 50% of VDC? I want to get a vector here. This is uh, 0 which is uh, uh, 1 by 2 times of VDC and the other 1 by 2 times of VDC only with the 15 degrees, 1 by 2 times of VDC only at 30 degrees, 1 by 2 VDC 45 degrees, 1 by 2 VDC 60 degrees. I want to get like this. I want to get like for uh, this one, only 50% only I want. I want only 50% so that I want to have a vector which is rotating in nature but it should, its magnitude must be 0 0.5 times of VDC only, and it has to jump for every 15 degrees like this. So the making a vector to jump for every 15 degrees with some magnitude, that is nothing but controlled voltage, that is 0 0.5 VDC I want, or otherwise 0 0.75 times of VDC I want, or otherwise 0 0.85 times of VDC I want, so that for the different cases, my vector should be flexible. Not only 50%, I want to get for 75%. 75% means how it is? 0, 15, 30, 45, 60, like this. It is jumping like this. In each sector, it will jump for four times. So that, for example, it is jumping 1, 2, 3, 4. So that there are six sectors are there. 6 into 1, 2, 3, 4. So that 6 into 4. 6 into 4. How much times it is jumping? 24 times. 
so that in one complete cycle of sinusoidal of 50 heads 50 head the time period is about uh, 0.02 seconds 1 by 50 uh, seconds we are going to take so that in this it has to jump for 24 times it has to jump for 24 times so that this is which for, for example the frequency of uh, uh, this is nothing but f is the frequency or fr is the frequency here so that your switching frequency will become as because in one cycle it is jumping for 24 times so that 24 into 50 that is nothing but uh, 1200 heads so what is this 1200 heads 1200 heads is the switching frequency of your inverter for example you are making for every 7.5 degrees 7.5 15 22.5 30 like that so how many times it is jumping 60 divided by 7.5 eight times so that there are six sectors 6 into 8 48 these are known as samples so in one cycle it is noting for 48 times it is jumping 48 jumpings we are getting so and what is the switching frequency here the switching frequency is about 48 into 50 that is about 2.4 kilohertz or 2400 heads this is the switching frequency okay in that way we have to control in that way we have to go for uh, for that one so what is how can, how can you achieve that how do you achieve that here i am getting only one vector here uh, this is possible only we are going to get only because of uh, one thing one thing means what happens here this is one vector this is second one i want to get a reference vector here but how it is possible only we have the option 0 60 120 but i want to have a vector with uh, some 30 degrees for example i want to get a vector with 30 degrees with 0 0.5 so I will tell you the logic only in this class because uh, time is uh, not permitting. Uh, if it is possible in the next uh, uh, coming classes or any one 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 of the days, uh, I will tell you what is this uh, SUPW technique. So here, uh, just the logic I am telling. So here we know that the switching state is nothing but plus minus minus. This is nothing but plus plus minus. This is nothing but all plus and all minus. We know that that all plus is nothing but V seven and all minus is nothing but V zero. And this plus minus minus we are indicating with V one. Plus plus minus we are indicating with V two. For example, I have an object here. <clears throat> I have an object. I am applying a force here F one in this direction. Where it will move? It will move in this direction. And also I am applying a force F two here at an angle of sixty degrees. So this force is acting in this way and this force is acting in this way and both the forces are having <coughs> same magnitude. So where this object will move, so this is angle is 60 degrees and this is F1 force and F2 force, both F1 is equal to F2. So that where it will move, definitely there is no doubt it will move with the 30 degrees inclination because these two forces are same and 60 degrees apart. So that there is no doubt at the 30 degrees inclination it will move. For example, I am uh, I am increasing this force F2. F2 is greater. F2 is greater than F1. So that when it is greater and this is F1 is less, so that where it will move, this object will move in this way. That is near to F2. So that one simple object in the physical point of view, so if you see a force F1 is acting and there is a force F2 is acting, based on the magnitudes of this F1 and F2, which are acting at 60 degrees, so this may moves in this direction or this way moves in this direction and this way moves in this direction. So that based on the magnitudes of the forces, this location will be there. That is one thing. And also you want to move this one only for two centimeters. So these are continuously forces. <coughs> F1, F2 are same. F1, F2 are same, 60 degrees apart, but they are continuously operating. But you want to move this object for only one centimeter. Then what we have to do? We have to go for, we have to apply the another force here. So based on the balancing of these forces, F1 and F2 are equal. It will move in this way. But based on the magnitude of F3, it will settle at 1 centimeter or 2 centimeter or 3 centimeter or 0 0.5 centimeters. So that, that is nothing but the balancing of forces here. So based on the balancing of the forces, an object will move in this direction or in this direction or in this direction. And the distance is also... To, uh, to restrict that distance, if we <coughs> apply the another force in the opposite direction to this, so it will be restricted at some point of time. That logic only we are using in the SVPW technique. What is that logic? This switching state is plus minus minus. 
this switching state is plus plus minus and this is all plus or all minus how much time period we are maintaining this plus minus minus means top bottom bottom <coughs> sorry and how much time we are maintaining this switching state top top bottom and how much time we are maintaining this switching state all top and all bottom will gives you this location of this resultant vector and the magnitude of this resultant vector so that is called volt time balance by using volt time balance technique we will find out what is t and how much time period we have to operate this one how much time period we have to operate this one and how much time period we have to operate t not for example i am operating uh, t1 time period 3 millisecond for example i am saying and uh, t2 is uh, 1 millisecond i am up, i am applying this this switching state plus plus minus and i am operating null state which is nothing but uh, all plus for a uh, time period of uh, uh, for let us say 1.5 milliseconds so when we are maintaining this plus minus minus for 3 milliseconds plus plus minus for 1 millisecond all plus for 1.5 millisecond you may get a vector with uh, some 20 degrees 20 degrees and its magnitude may be for example some x times of vdc like that we are going to get r 1.0.5 times vdc or 0.25 times of vdc so by applying these forces or the switching state by maintaining the switching state for this much time period we can synthesize this uh, voltage vector this is the concept behind this uh, 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 okay uh, this is the only concept just i will uh, show you some slides so these are the time periods that we are applying uh, in detail i will tell you in the next class if possible these are the switching sequences so this is what is a how what are the steps to implement this uh, svpwm technique and how the switching states we are going to going to maintain uh, next one uh, okay so this is the algorithm how we are implementing the algorithm this is the three devil inverter so what is a three devil inverter just i will uh, tell you the uh, uh, just a introduction to this three devil inverter so because of two level inverter <coughs> we are going to get the output voltage like this because of space vector pulse modulation, some positive pulses, some negative pulses like this, we are going to get. This is the output voltage of the two level inverter. What is the output voltage of the three level inverter? If you see the output voltage of the three level inverter, we are going to get the uh, steps like this. This is positive side and this is negative side. And also here, uh, pulse width in the form of the pulses, we are going to get the output here. So this is three level <coughs> inverter output voltage. Like that, if you go for five level inverter output voltage, we are going to get the levels, five levels like this, we are going to get the line to line voltage. For example, there are 21 level, <clears throat> so that in terms of the, like the steps, we are going to get 21 steps here, 21 steps here. So that as the level of the inverter is increases, your inverter output voltage is getting closer to side side. And also when this inverter is applied with the space vector pursuit partition technique, that uh, PhD value will be drastically decreases. 80%, 85% to even 3%, 2% also we are going to get. That is a, uh, that is called the three-level inverter output voltage. So that this is the three-level inverter. And uh, similarly, <coughs> this one, I told you this one. This line-to-line -line voltage of the three-level inverter, you see here, this is zero, VDC by two, VDC, zero, VDC by two, zero, like that we are going to get. These are the line-to-line -line voltage of the three-level inverter. And how to implement SVPWM for the three-level inverter? This is a different uh, concept and different aspect. If you see that, uh, this is the line-to-line -line voltage of the three-level inverter. By applying the SVPWM technique, how it is zero, VDC by two, and VDC, and also in the form of the pulses, we are going to get here because of the application of the, uh, what is that, the SVPWM technique. So this is two-level inverter output voltage. So you see here, it is getting 54.02% <coughs> total THD. Coming for three level, it is going for 28.6 percent. <clears throat> this is the basic method. So by using this basic method, if you see that uh, uh, some analysis with the modulation bits, uh, fundamental component, THD, in case of two level inverter and three level inverter, this is a uh, given for different modulation indices. Uh, we are going to get 51.252 and here 26.51. So this is nothing but only conventional PWN space vector pulse modulation technique, but there are so much depth is there, so many other uh, procedures or other algorithms are there, which will make you to have even uh, less than 1% of total harm research also. This is all about uh, today's class. Any doubts, please? Anyone? <coughs> Any doubt, please?
Any doubt, please? Right, sir. Okay, sir. Is it okay? Okay. Hello. Hello, sir. Right, sir. Completed, sir? Yeah, yeah. Kind of finished, it, sir. Finished. Okay. Any inputs or any... Uh, uh, anybody, anybody having <laughs> any doubts or questions, please ask. Uh, Mahesh, please uh, unmute all. Yes, sir. Uh, now uh, anyone can uh, speak. Anyone? Uh, good evening, sir. Satish, sir. Sir, good evening. Good evening. Uh, sir, I am the deputy. The sinusoidal is the voltage. Is the other. This time, man, power can. English, sir. English. Sir, tell me, sir. Tell me. Good <clears throat> evening, sir. Please ask in English. Please, ask. please, sir. My sir. name is sir. Sir, tell me, sir. Ask me, sir. <clears throat> so now this voltage you are measuring with this uh, um, sinus waves and even uh, signal. Eh? So we can calculate what is the power transmission. The auto power transmission it helps, sir. Auto without a cable. No, 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 no. It is not possible, sir. That is a, that is a different aspect, sir. This is different aspect. Acha, acha. It's not possible. This is only to improve the quality of the inverter output voltage. In terms of uh, uh, voltage uh, THD as well as the current THD, and at the mm -hmm. same time quality power output we are going to get from the inverter. Okay. <clears throat> Similarly, like a step up and step down transformer, sir. Uh, that is also different aspect, sir. This is only how to operate the our inverter uh, to achieve uh, uh, quality power. Quality power, right? That voltage yes. we are increasing. Uh, voltage we are controlling, sir. We are controlling the voltage. Controlling. Okay, okay. We, okay, are, okay. we are getting fine voltage from this. Fine voltage. Okay, okay. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Welcome, sir. Welcome. Uh, anyone, please ask. <coughs> sir, which type of applications are used in that uh, inverter, sir? Any inverter, that is basically we are going to use this multi-level inverter concept and SVPWM concept for process control techniques, for the process oh. control. But a single, single base input and three base output, that inverter is, apply, uh, uh, this application is acceptable, sir? No, 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 the input is also, input is DC, okay. input is DC, the output is AC we are getting. Oh, okay, only Automatic inverter. No. We are getting. Yeah, this okay. is the inverter only. Okay. Okay. Uh, Unfortunately, my camera, why I, do, I cannot understand. Uh, why uh, no problem, sir. Anyone still have doubts or any queries? Otherwise, you can't. <laughs> No, no, please, no, okay, please avoid cost distribution. Just Dist disturbance. Okay, anyone, if you know queries or doubts, okay, okay, we'll now close. Um, sir, uh, very good lecture, sir. Uh, uh, today, uh, our communal Dr. P. Satish Kumar, very good lecture and uh, innovative and okay. uh, useful to the research scholars and uh, I, I congratulate our uh, today's speaker now i request the uh, venkata subbai garu dr venkata subbai garu honorary secretary to conclude the uh, session thank you sir thank you very much sir uh, thank you subbai garu honorary secretary you. please conclude the session uh, thank you chairi sir uh, respected today's speaker professor dr p satish kumar committee member and convener ECM IEA Telangana State Center, Engineer B. Brahma Reddy, Chairman IEA TSC, Engineer E. Srinivasachari, 
Chairman, ECM IAPSC. Past Chairman, Council Members, Past Honorary Secretaries, Members of Telangana State Central Committee, IEI, Distinguished Guest, Representatives of Media, Ladies and Gentlemen, Good evening to all. On behalf of the Telangana State Center of IEI, ECM of IEA TSC, and on my own behalf, I convey our sincere and profound thanks to Professor Dr. P. Sajesh Margaru for his lecture on the topic energy conservation, pulse width modulations for uh, inverters. Sir, your lecture is very informative and uh, exhaustive, sir. So though it is elaborated, uh, it is very much interesting, sir. So once again, I extend my heartfelt thanks to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. I extend my gratitude to the dignitaries, past presidents of IEI, past chairman of IEI TSC, past honorary secretaries of IEI TSC, council members, committee members, corporate members, and others who made it convenient to attend this virtual event. So I am grateful to the representatives of media and thanks to one and all. Now I request all of you kindly raise for national anthem. Mahesh. Janagana mana adhinayaka jayahe Bharat bhagya vidhata Punjab, Sindh, Gujarat, Maratha, Dravida, Utkada, Vanga, Vindya, Himachal, Yamuna, Ganga, Utchal, Jaladhi, Taranga, Tava, Shubha, Name, Jage, Tava, Shubha, Ashish, Mage, Gahe Tava Jaya Gatha Jana Gana Mangala Dayak Jaya He Bharat Bhagya Vidhata Jaya He Jaya He Jaya He Jaya 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 He Jaya He Once again, thanks to all of you. Thank you, sir. Satish Kumar, sir.